Hi, welcome to Love is Crafting. Love is Crafting. I'm Tila. And I'm Stanton. And if you're new to our channel, thanks for checking us out. And if you're returning, thanks for the support. What we do on this channel is we take you through crafting and DIY projects that are real, but not necessarily perfect because love, love is imperfect. Perfect. We have a goal to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, but we need your help. Would you consider subscribing to our channel? We post new videos every Saturday. And in today's video, we will be using torch paste to create a school day's photo display. Now, torch paste is a gel that you apply to wood to give it that burnt wood look without having to use fire. All you need is a little bit of heat. And we love the rustic look and feel that this creates. Now, this is our first woodworking project on this channel, so we're very excited to show you what the outcome is. And you can show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Love is crafting. Love is crafting. Okay, so um, these boards come in a um, lot of different uh, sizes. Um, we actually have some boards from some other projects. We'll um, break down what type of boards they are a little bit later on in the video. But right now we are just trying to make sure that they are the length that we wanna work with. So we wanna, this end project, we wanna make it four feet uh, and four feet across. So good thing is from a different project that we use these for, uh, we have some boards that are just a tad bit over four feet. Um, obviously you could use a tape measure and measure your four feet, but we're gonna do this the quick way. Let's go board to board. Get ourselves a pencil. And mark it. Doesn't really have to be precise because after we cut this and glue them together, uh, we'll end up cutting it again. So we just have our, our generalized mark to cut it down to something a little bit more manageable. All right, we have our, our saw here. We're just gonna uh, line it up, line that mark up to the middle. Make sure it's flush. Obviously these saws do rotate so you can cut on angles. Uh, we just have it at zero because we want a, a straight cut. So let's get cutting. Now we have our four foot board, which can go along with our other boards that you see. Now they're about the same height give us something to work with. Okay, so we have our two boards. As you see, these are some Southern Yellow Pine boards and they are linking boards, which means that they have two sections on them. They have the, the groove section and they have the lip section, male, female portions, as you see. Uh, and these, these which allow them to just link up together. Now, when you are uh, picking out these pieces of wood, you wanna make sure that, uh, for two things, you wanna look to make sure the boards are straight, because if they're straight, that means they'll be able to link the whole way through. And also, you wanna look at this lip portion. So if you see this, uh, we got this one as an example. Uh, as you see, since these lips, they're, they're, they're uh, thin, so they break easily. You don't wanna have boards that are broken like this because it makes it harder for the next board to, uh, to fit in. So make sure that they are good all the way through. Now, if you buy a, a messed up board, can it still work? Yeah, it can still work. Either way, you can make anything work, so. Uh, uh, it just uh, the, for the best best results you want to make sure that it's not messed up so these although these boards uh, link together we want to make it uh, a permanent bond so in the female portion we have some gorilla glue wood glue which this is the application tip that we like most for these projects because it's that um, you know, a straight, straight line there. It fits very easily into these grooves. So. I think you just pull it up. 
Yep, I think it's. Yep. Just a small. Oh, in your mouth is. No, no, no! You just broke it. You just pull it up a little bit and it comes out. All right, once that's there, get the metal portion of your board and just fit it in. Make sure that these grooves are on the same side. flip this over and we're gonna fit this board into here and we are going to go with a mallet to not damage the board instead of the hammer so and the reason why we're flipping it over is when you hit the board with the mallet you want to make sure that it is on the male side because the male side is stronger than those lips. As as I saw as I showed you before, the lips break easily, so hit on the male side. All right, so those are fit together. As you can see, the wood glue is going to need some time to dry. So let's leave it there and uh, we'll be back with it. All right, so here we are. We have our board cut. We're going to go ahead and sand down the edges because the edges did come off a little rough. So we have our sandpaper here. We have 60, 80, and 120. Whenever you're sanding, you always want to start off with the coarser sandpaper and then work your way up to the fine paper. Um, Remember, the lower the number, the coarser the uh, sandpaper. Yes, that. And we have a little hand sander here that we got at the store, and we're going to try it out. So we're going to start with this one. And you just put it on there. It's like Velcro. So, you know, like it comes off, comes on. Super easy. And since this is for like our DIYers, you want to let them know where you got this uh, hand sander and mm -hmm. how much it was. So we did get this hand sander, sander from Walmart because that was the closest thing to us. And it was only, it was under 30 bucks. So it was really cool. So we're not using a bunch of expensive tools or anything. Like no, that. not at all. And to be completely honest, this is going to be like my first time using a hand sander. So let's see how it goes. Um, so yeah, wish me luck. All right, so this is a powerful little sander in my opinion. I've never used other sanders, but the vibration on this thing is intense. Um, so what I did is I got the sides a little bit that I thought were a little rough because I don't, I want to be able to touch this and not poke myself. So pretty easy. I say so myself. Remember when you're sanding, make sure you let the sander do the work. You don't have to press hard on the sander. The sander, let the sandpaper do the work and that's it. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, I think it sanded pretty good for the first one. So now we go on to the next course right yep all right so again this is just like velcro you just velcro it off and so that was 80 and now no no that was 60 right yeah 60 80 and 120 so now we're at the 80 all right we're all good with 
our 80 and so we're gonna switch to our 120. And it's on there pretty good. Like this Velcro, it, it's not, it's not cheapy Velcro. Like I had to use a little bit of muscle, but that was also my left hand and my left hand, like I don't have much muscle in it. So, you know, all right, 120, let's go. Do you guys ever have like these random thoughts like what would happen and how bad would it hurt if I were to touch that while it was spinning? Those are called intrusive thoughts that you said you don't know what I talk about when I say stuff like that. I'm just kidding. I would never do such a thing as touch that while it was going. Like that's so dangerous. Do not do that. Those are intrusive actions. So it's different. All right, so we have sanded down our edges, so our wood is all ready to go. We are gonna move to our next step, which is actually my favorite, staining. Okay, so we are ready for our next step. We already have our board uh, glued together, cut and sanded. The next step is staining. So uh, when you're working with wood stain, um, unlike paint, you don't want to uh, shake up wood stain. If you shake up wood stain, it becomes too uh, liquidy. So uh, it does have a regular like paint can uh, type lid, which they sell a tool to open these. I just use a screwdriver. Just, Flathead. Yeah, just putting it in and lifting up. Uh, mix between lifting and twisting. Lifting and twisting. And what kind of stain do we have there? We have wood stain. No, <laughs> we got some uh, uh, ebony. Um, men wax wood finish. Um, we do still want it consistent. So uh, we're going to use little popsicle stick to stir it up. It's called a craft stick. It's We're not gonna a, use pop a popsicle, popsicle stick. stick to stir it up. Popsicle sticks means that it was on a popsicle. This is a crafting wood stick. A crafting wood stick. <laughs> <coughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Jeremy. So, uh, when you're working with um, wood stain, there's a few ways that you do it. You can apply it by a, um, a sponge brush. Uh, we are gonna do it a different way. Uh, I like a, uh, you know, just a, a rag cleaning better. Cleaning cloth. Yeah, this is a cleaning cloth, like dollar store cleaning cloth. Uh, the, the trick with this wood stain to make sure you don't get it blotchy like a lot of other things, is the trick is long strokes. So uh, let's go ahead and dip it in here. Get some long, consistent strokes. To uh, cover it up. Use the popsicle stick and get in there. Oh, that's a good idea. I don't know how much it's gonna hold. I meant like stick the popsicle stick in the um, actual 
fabric and stick it in the hole. Oh, yeah. All right, so we have this stain. We went back and forth about maybe doing more than one layer, but I think this came out pretty well. So uh, I think we're good with one layer. Let me see the back. What does the back look like? Oh yeah, it looks good. Yeah, tell you how much stain uh, transforms a project, right? Oh my gosh, it looks amazing. So much better. But that's not it. Stick with us and we'll, we're gonna take this up another notch. All right, so it is the next day. We have our board here that has been stained and it is dry. Um, now what we need to do is we need to make the stencil for the um, wording on the board. In our case, we will be using um, just regular plain old vinyl um, 651 and we cut it out on our Cricut. Um, so what you need to do first of all is you need to weed your project. Now because we are doing a stencil, we don't want the lettering. We just want the outline of the lettering. So you're going to weed out the lettering. Normally you weed out this outside part, but that's not what we're doing in this case. And remember when you're weeding, take your time and go slow. Um, and you do need all your little, I don't know, bubbles, holes, spaces, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so this is what we have. And now we're going to go ahead and put on transfer tape to cover the entire thing. So I have my transfer tape here. And I'm just going to use my fingers to peel it. And from here, we are going to try to put it on there as straight as possible. Um, so when you're cutting, it makes it easier if you are cutting um, straight edges, but in this case, I didn't. So yeah, it makes it a little bit harder. So I'm gonna try to line up my line with the bottom of my transfer tape to see if I can get it clear. And then you want to use your good old scraping tool and you wanna scrape it down. As you can see, I measured a little bit off, which is fine because I don't need, I just need some type of outline around the words. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim off the excess that I have. I hate when I do this because I feel like, oh man, that's so much wasted product, but it's fine. It really is, it's not that big. Of a so now that you have that here, flip it over and you want to scrape the back of your project as well. And then all you want to do is you want to peel off the paper backing. Oh, is that what you meant by 651? Yeah, it's Oracle 651 vinyl. Is that what you meant? Yeah, I had no idea what that meant. Oh yeah, it's Oracle 651 vinyl. All right, so now we have our decal on our transfer tape and now comes the hard part. Now you have to get your placement on your board. So, the um, hard part here is, well, let's first of all, let's 
we're gonna get out a ruler and we're going to make sure that we know what we want to do and our spacing. Um, and first you have to decide which one's gonna be the front and which one's gonna be the back. So this is gonna be our front and do we want this to be our top or do we want this one to be our top? Any opinions? Yeah, no. <laughs> I think I want, oops, okay, I want this one to be our top, so let's turn it around, so this is going to be our top, okay, and I need to get a ruler so we can measure this out so we can do our spacing correctly. All right, so got our tape measure. Our board from what we wanted to do is about 48 inches, which is four feet, okay? Now our decal with all the pieces together is 29 inches. Plus spacing. Including the spacing that we want, which will be like one inch, one and a half inches. Um, and then, so we have the 29. So 48 minus 29 is? 19. 19 okay and then 19 divided by two is eight and a half i think like no that. that gives you 17. nine and a half okay nine and a half was nine and a half yep okay so that means that we need to have nine and a half inches on this side and nine and a half inches on the other side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my tape measure and I'm measuring out nine and a half inches. And I'm gonna take my nice little pencil here. Oops. And I am going to put a little tick mark at nine and a half. And then I'm gonna to come to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing. So this is where I want my decal to start and stop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the first word of my decal and I want it to be as close to the top as possible because I want all of that Y on there. After I feel like I scraped it down pretty good, I am going to remove the transfer tape. So that's gonna give us a nice little stencil. And we're just gonna make sure we don't have any bubbles. Um, especially close to the lettering because we want to get that nice and, and clean when we do the next step. Sometimes using your fingers are a little bit easier, but do what you got to do. All right. And next, we're going to go ahead and do the next name. And if I want to be a little OCD, I could use my tape measure and I can measure about an inch from the end of that letter to an inch and a half. So we're gonna start right about here. Again, I want to get the beginning of my letter. And now that I'm thinking about this, we probably should have used a laser or a chalk chalk line so I get this straight but we didn't so you know it is what it is right we do our best straight enough yeah straight enough
Okay, so we have our um, our design stuck down here onto the wood. Uh, next, we have to add our torch paste. This is torch paste, just a material that we're gonna use to darken the uh, darken the the wood or burn the wood. So first things first, we're gonna get a little. We got this. Shout out to Pamper Chef, Pamper Chef uh, scraper here. I love Pamper Chef. Pamper Chef. Can I touch this with my hands? Mm, why, sure. Why not? All right, let's see. Let's do a dollop right there. Try to get it all off my hands just as much as possible. So, uh, the good thing with this is you only need a very thin layer. And try your best not to get it on anything outside of what you want burnt. So be very careful not to hit the other edges. That's why a thicker, um, I guess. Vinyl? Not vinyl, but space. Like I should have, I shouldn't have cut this part so close. I should have kept that there. So we didn't have to be so careful, but yeah, you know, see, life happens, right? You live and you learn. And you get loves. That is not your slogan. And once you put your thin layer on that, all the excess can go back into that container. And so the really cool thing about it is you'll be using this for a long time. Unless you're just like use burning like everything, like bringing wood everywhere. Do you think um, a makeup brush would be easier to spread that? Like a, a foam brush? Like a foam, you know what I'm talking about? Um. Like, no. <laughs> okay. I know what a foam brush is. Like, a, is it the same as a crafting foam brush? No, it's like the makeup. The, but you, you blend with it. You blend and you blend. I haven't done a lot of blending in my years, so uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, I don't do a lot of makeup myself, so I don't know. A blending sponge. I don't know. Maybe it's a sponge. I don't know. So this paste was originally clear, and then they added the tint of orange on it so you could tell where you had it on your project or not. But because we use such a dark stain, we have a few concerns. Um, the first is that we get it all over the decal the way that we intended. And the second is that it will actually burn dark enough. So we will see what will happen. Okay, so the paste has been drying here on the board for uh, about, you need to leave it for at least two minutes. It's been at least that, probably longer, but um, so it's really just taking the time to uh, soak into the wood. Uh, since we have that stain on there, we wanted to give it a little bit of extra time. So if you have a stain on it, make sure that you are given a little bit more time to actually dry or to soak into the wood. So uh, let's go ahead and try to remove it. All right, so that takes off the mask, the stencil that we're gonna use. Hopefully uh, this has enough uh, paste on it. Uh, what we're gonna do is get our heat gun uh, preheated and we will try to get this burned. Okay, our heat gun is fully uh, heated up. Uh, this is just a craft heat gun. So this is gonna be our first attempt to see if, and, and see if this works. Okay, so that craft heat gun, that was not doing a trick. Pulled out um, this heat gun. I say pulled out, I meant went and bought and got it delivered like in like two hours. 
uh, from Amazon, amazing people. So this has two modes, uh, 752 degrees Fahrenheit and 1,112 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't believe that's as hot as this actually gets. Doesn't make sense to me, but just in case what we're gonna do is we're gonna start very high and try to bring it down and see what happens. So uh, this uh, torch paste has been uh, sitting here for a long time. I'm not sure if that's gonna affect the uh, end result, but only one way to find out. We love how this wood burning turned out and we love it even more that it turned out just as expected. To finish up this project, we cut out the numbers one through 18 and apply them the same way we did the name. And then we added bulldog clips using hot glue and E6000. Thanks for watching. Remember, love is crafting.